In this video, I'm going to show you how you can integrate with the HeyGen platform on Make.com so that you can create automations where you generate these type of avatar videos. So if we quickly look at the avatars that are available on the HeyGen platform, you have public avatars with a variety of different views and poses and scenes. And then there's also the possibility to create your own avatar, which is what I've done here. And you do that by uploading a two minute video of yourself speaking to the camera and then it trains an AI model around that content. So this is my AI avatar that I created on the system. Your instant avatar is ready. Try creating videos with it. Also click the feedback button to share what you think. Hope you enjoy. Not exactly what I sound like, a bit more American, but you get the idea. I was initially going to use this AI clone to welcome new members to our community, but can the idea as it's just a little bit too weird. Check it out here. Hi, John. Welcome to the AI automators. I'm Daniel. Well, I'm actually Daniel Bot his digital twin. Never mind the voice, just some very strange facial movements as well. I tried out HeyGen's video translation and lip sync features. So here I uploaded our onboarding video and got HeyGen to translate it into Spanish. The result is a lot better. Bienvenido a la comunidad de AI Automators, la comunidad definitiva para transformar tu negocio con IA y automatización. Hemos construido sistemas del mundo real que funcionan yeah, it even kind of sounds like me. I have no idea if the text is any way accurate. So any Spanish speakers, uh, let me know in the comments. But yeah, definitely the, the lip sync looks a lot better. Now, this is a real video. This isn't an AI video. So it is just the, the mouth movements that have changed. This HeyGen scenario that covers standard requests to the HeyGen API, as well as an architecture built on webhooks, is available in the AI Automators community which you can check out in the link below. So in these automations, I'm gonna generate a video using my own avatar as well as one of the public avatars. What's worth noting is there is a HeyGen module available on Make. It is a community module though, so it isn't free. So when you click on that, it'll bring you to this page where you can install it, but it does come at a cost. HeyGen has a publicly accessible API, so it's possible to integrate with their service just by using the HTTP request module. So you don't necessarily need that community module that's available there. So today I'll be using this API to trigger the request. And this is the retrieve video details API that I'll be using to capture the video URL when it's finished. So this is probably the most basic flow that you can create where you trigger a request to generate the video. You wait a period of time while that video generates and then you retrieve the URL. So in the first module, all I'm doing is setting my HeyGen API key. Then in the second module, I'm hitting this video generate API, which is effectively this one. I'm passing that API key. And then further down, we have the body that we're passing. And here we need to pass in certain parameters. So for character, we're sending in an avatar. And here you need to provide an avatar ID and you can also optionally provide an avatar style. So if I'm to use the avatar of myself, my AI clone on the HeyGen platform, I need to go to my avatars. And if you hover over here and copy ID, that's actually the wrong ID. You need to click into this and you need to copy the ID of the specific look. So get avatar look ID, that's what we're looking for here. And then there isn't an avatar style needed for this one, so you can just delete that out. And then in terms of a voice, we can then pick up a voice, which is this one here. You can't access the ID there. So if you click on AI voice, you'll see it's here, uh, the Daniel voice from the avatar. So then get that voice ID, and then we can paste that in there. And then I've just put in some input text here. Hi, I'm Daniel Bot to show you how this works. And then this is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So we're just setting the dimensions there. And then you can check out what are the parameters, optional parameters that you can provide in the API documentation. If there's other things that you want to drop in here, maybe you want a green screen, uh, different image background, etc. You can drop all of that in there. So um, parse response is yes. So we'll click OK to that. And then generally speaking, these videos can take a few minutes to load or to, to render. So I'm putting in a three minute delay here or 180 seconds. And then finally, we're hitting the video status get API. So that is the retrieve video details API, video status get. And this is a get request. So all we're doing is we're passing in the video ID that we get from the response from this module. So you'll see here, if I click it again, you can see it's video status uh, dot get, and then the question mark video ID equals, and then the response from the other module. That's it, it's a get request, so there's nothing to, to pass in terms of the body. So this should provide a URL to a video, and then you can do whatever you want with that. You would integrate that further in workflow or in an automation. So I'll show you how I do that in, in a couple of minutes. Great, so let's save that, and then we'll click run once. So it's uh, loaded up the API key, 
It's hit this module to generate the video. And you can see here under data, we have a video ID now, and that's what we'll be using to fetch the video once it's fully rendered. And then we're into this kind of sleep slash delay cycle where we're just waiting because it's not that simple to poll a web service to see a response in make. So the easiest way to do it is just put in a delay. In a minute, I'll show you a webhook version of this so that when HeyGen finishes rendering the video, it's gonna ping a webhook in make. And that way then we can interact with the URL and do something with it. The other thing is while that is loading, so you can see that we're still in a delay cycle here. If you click into the HeyGen platform onto the home screen, you can see that it's currently generating that video. So pretty much every request you make to this version two endpoint is reflected in the AI studio that you see here in the home screen. And that one is 50% ready. So actually this might be longer than three minutes, let's see. This is a real flaw in this type of architecture, the maximum weight that you can put in into make of five minutes. So if this video takes longer than five minutes to render, this automation will error out and it probably will take longer than five minutes based off this only being 50% ready. So that's why the webhook architecture that I'll show you is gonna be a lot better. Okay, so the delay is complete and then we ping this video status endpoint and yeah, you can see it's still processing. And that's a problem now because that's that automation cycle done. So yeah, that's not gonna work. So you would need to increase the delay to maybe 300 seconds or five minutes. But again, if this is a very long video that you're creating, it could take much longer than five minutes to generate that video. So that video is now complete. So if I just come and run this module again, I'll just drop in the Hagen API key. So that's the video ID. I just, I've just ran it manually, which obviously isn't gonna work in an automation, but you get the idea. So there's data, data, and then thumbnail URL and video URL. So let's have a look at it. So it's downloaded it. Hi, I'm Daniel Bot. So yeah, a pretty short generated video to be waiting you know, more than five minutes for. So there's the flow in this process. You could you could increase that to five minutes, but you know probably half the time it's going to take longer than five minutes, and this entire automation is is null and void. So the better way to do this is to use webhooks. So if you come to the HeyGem documentation, and then if you scroll down here, you can see that there's a full section for web. So you can list webhooks, add a webhook, delete a webhook. So I've created flows within Make for these webhook operations. So if we look at the first one, it's list active webhooks. So here I'm just setting my HeyGen API key again. And then in terms of the make a request module, I'm hitting the endpoint list. So that is effectively this one, endpoint list. It's a get request, so we don't need to pass anything else other than just that and the authentication token. If I move the clock icon to here and save, when I click run once, it's gonna run this operation. There we go. It's loaded the API key and it's now listed all of the webhooks that I have registered on the HeyGen platform. And as you can see down here, the data array is empty, so I haven't registered any. So what we need to do is we need to create a webhook and then register that webhook on the HeyGen system so that when HeyGen completes the generation of the video, it can ping our webhook and then we can do something with that video URL. So that's what I've done down here. I've created a flow that starts with the webhook and then it goes off and does something with the URL. So if we click on this custom webhook module, you'll be able to add a custom webhook yourself. You can give it a name. And then once you do that, you're gonna get this address. So if you would copy that address to the clipboard and then come up here, and then under this register webhook flow, if you click on that, now you'll get this error because it's not linked to the scenario. So I'll just copy the clock icon down to here. We're gonna run this line of the scenario. Then we have our HeyGen API key again. And then under this make webhook URL, I can now paste in that webhook URL. So we'll press okay to that. And then in the make a request module, we're gonna hit endpoint.add. So that's this one here, add a webhook endpoint, point.add. And this requires some fields. So you can see the body parameters, it needs a URL. And then also you can provide the list of events that you want to trigger the call to your webhook. So we're hitting the endpoint.add, it's a post method, passing the API key. And what we're doing is we're passing the make webhook URL that we just set here, we're passing it there. And in terms of the events that we want to be notified of, what we want to be notified of is when the avatar video has successfully generated. So that's the event. And that's what's listed here in this webhook event list, if you want to run this as well. Okay, so we have our avatar video success. We'll click okay to that. So now let's save this and run it. So now that has registered this webhook with the HeyGen platform. So now if I move this clock icon back up to here, save and run. Now I'm listing the active webhooks on the HeyGen platform. And if we come down here, we can now see we have data and that webhook that we just set is now showing. 
So now if we generate anything on the HGN platform, it's gonna ping that link. There's also a flow here if you wanted to delete a webhook on the HGN platform. So just if you're kind of testing things out and you're registering webhooks on HGN and you wanted to remove them, then effectively all we're doing here, again, setting the API key, we're just hitting this endpoint we're using the delete method and we're passing the endpoint ID. And you get that endpoint ID from here. So you can even see it data, data, and there's the endpoint ID. So if you wanted to deregister a webhook on the platform, you can just copy that ID, drop it in here to, to the endpoint ID, and then run that delete a webhook. Okay, so let's now have a look at the, the flow itself. And what I've done is I've created a very simple Airtable base. And this Airtable base just has a single table avatar videos, which has a script. It has an avatar ID, a voice ID. It has an action button to trigger the webhook, some very kind of rudimentary statuses. And then it has fields to save a video thumbnail, a video MP4. And then also we track kind of the hey and task ID as well. So what we'll do is let's create a new row here. The script could be, hello YouTube, welcome to my video. And then we're gonna pass these variables, avatar ID and voice ID. And again, you can get these from the hey gen platform. You know, so that's the, the look ID. So you could get his look ID where he's maybe sitting on the, the sofa. So yeah, let's paste that in. And then, you know, we'll choose a voice ID for this guy. Hello, this is how I sound. That sounds good. So we'll get that voice ID, drop that in there. And that's pretty much it. So I've also created this action button to, to trigger this automation. So if we edit the button, what we're doing is we're hitting the webhook, which you can see here, you know, that's the same URL that you have here. I'm just setting source as Airtable. I'm given the video ID so that we can load the Airtable record. And then I'm setting the action to generate avatar video. What's really cool about this is that this single webhook can take requests both from Airtable, which I've just created, as well as HeyGen. And that's all then done in this router. If that source equals Airtable, it'll go down this track. Whereas if the event type equals avatar video success, which is what's gonna be in the ping from HeyGen when it's finished rendering the video. So if we see that in the, in, in the request of this webhook, then we're gonna go down this track. So that way we can generate a video on this track and save the video on this track all from a single webhook URL, which is really nice. So we have the webhook, we're setting the API key, then we have that router, as I mentioned. And then if it is coming from Airtable, we're gonna fetch the Airtable record. So HeyGen is the base, avatar videos is the table name, and then it's the video ID is what we're loading up. And that's what we're passing here. So video ID equals, and then ampersand record ID ampersand. So that's the Airtable row ID effectively. So we load up the Airtable base here, then we set some variables. So this is kind of a, this is a funny one. We're gonna have a script. So hello YouTube dash, welcome to my video. We're gonna be passing this, to the HeyGen API. The problem in Make is that there's no native way to make this text JSON safe. So there's no way to escape the text so that it's safe to actually pass in a web service call. So there's this kind of hack that we use to clean text before passing it in a HTTP make a request module. And that's what we're doing here. So effectively, if you look here, 15.script is here, and that's what we're kind of cleaning. And we're just finding and replacing all of the JSON characters that can mess this up. Make really need to come out with a native function for this, because that is just, it looks very hacky. So then we go to this module to make the request. So we're hitting video dash generate. It's the same as what we've done here in the first example. But the difference now is we're actually, we're not hard coding the text and hard coding the IDs. What we're doing is we're putting in the variables from Airtable that we're getting. We run this, so what I'll do is I'll just set a filter here when one equals zero. I don't wanna generate a video yet, but I wanna just load up this record. So we'll just save that. If I run once and I'll wait for new data. So by pressing that, it's hit the webhook and you can see here source Airtable video ID is this row on Airtable and then generate avatar video is the action. So because that's the case, it's gone down this flow, not this flow. And then we have Airtable get a record. We've passed the video ID that we've just received from the webhook. And now you can see script is hello YouTube dash welcome to my video. We have the avatar ID, the voice ID, etc. So then we've cleaned up that, that text or we've made it JSON safe. And now we've kind of come to this point where I've blocked it so far. So now what we need to do, we have avatar ID. So it's Raul sitting casual with an iPad. We have the voice ID, we have our input text. So there's nothing really we need to change here. 
So yeah, let's uh, remove this filter, press OK. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, save it and run it again, waiting for new data. And now you can see that there's nothing set here in terms of a HGN task ID. So if I click generate video, and I was run through that, it's pinged the web service to generate the video. And it's now saved the task ID for HGN to this row. And it's also updated the status to generation and progress. So there's only three statuses here. It's either to do generation of progress or completed. But yeah, it's now in the process of generating this. So now what I'll do is I'm going to click run once. I'm going to wait for new data. And because we've registered the webhook now with HGN, the minute this video is created, you can see API video is processing. The minute that video is finished processing, it's going to hit this endpoint. And then we're going to go down this track to actually save the thumbnail of the video and the video itself to Airtable. OK, there we go. It's finished the uh, render and it's hit the webhook. And as you can see, it's flowed down this track now. And I've implemented a small sleep here because sometimes the actual video status URL hasn't updated as fast as the webhook ping. So I've just put in a, a five second sleep. But now we can see the video status get is returning. Yeah, it's returning a success or a completed status. And it's given the thumbnail URL and the video URL. So you can see that here. And then we've just saved that to Airtable. So let's go back to Airtable now. And there we go. That's loaded up. And we can see Raul sitting on the couch. And let's have a look. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to my video. And there you go. So that probably took, again, longer than five minutes. So that is the real benefit of this approach. If that video took half an hour, it still would be successful because that webhook is just waiting for responses. So it gets around the whole maximum delay of five minutes. There are lots of other endpoints available on HeyGen, as you can see in their API documentation here. So you can use a similar process of that HTTP make a request module, drop in the API key, and just make sure you're formatting the request correctly. And you can see examples of requests here as well. If you'd like access to this blueprint so that you can quickly import it at the click of a button, as well as get access to this Airtable base, then check out the link in the description to our community where you can get access to all of our system templates as well as our micro templates. These contain full instructions on how to set up these automations. And then we also support our members through comments and weekly calls to help them get the most from AI automations. Check out the link in the description. And thanks for watching.